Hello everyone, I'm Gary Deliciums. Welcome back to another ranking video. And if this is your first time seeing any of my videos, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Help support my channel and get updates every time I post a video. So today we're going to be ranking the studio discography of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. The Red Hot Chili Peppers just released a new album called Unlimited Love uh, about three weeks ago now. I feel like it's been around. I've listened to it enough that I'm able to rank it with the rest of their studio discography. Red Hot Chili Peppers were one of my favorite bands growing up. I'm not so huge on them now as I was. Uh, I, I think uh, the last couple albums didn't really resonate with me as much. But nonetheless, I feel I'm strongly enough about those albums that I'm able to rank them here. And again, this, uh, this could probably change on a different day. Uh, so let's get right into it. Coming in last for me is The Getaway. This album features Josh Klinghoffer on guitar. Obviously it has the um, legendary band of Anthony Kiedis on vocals, Flea on bass, Chad Smith on drums. So with this album, I don't like the production. It's produced by Danger Mouse, who is like a uh, EDM techno, I guess. I, I mean, I know of him. I'm not huge into Danger Mouse, know what that was. But anyway, this, this album for me just wasn't as strong. It was a little more mellow. Didn't have, I feel like that, signature chili peppers recipe that made all their albums great a couple singles on here are probably the best songs on the album dark necessities and goodbye angels like i said probably best two songs uh after goodbye angels which is like the fifth track on the album kind of staggers off for me doesn't really keep my attention uh, coming next this is their latest album that i mentioned unlimited love this features the iconic john frusciante back in the lineup and then we've got the legendary lineup uh, again, like I already mentioned, with Josh, with uh, John Frusciante instead of Josh Klinghoffer. Uh, interesting fact, Josh Klinghoffer actually used to play guitar on with John Frusciante on a solo album and some of the solo stuff. So there is that connection there. Uh, for me, 17 tracks on this album, for me, is a little too long. Uh, the Black Summer was the lead single. Thought it was decent. Uh, I was expecting something a little more exciting, a little more powerful. Now that Frusciante was back in the band, because he is an amazing guitarist, I feel like he's very underrated, and he's a great writer. But for me, I just feel like it's it's a little too mellow. The 17 tracks on here get a little bit exhausting trying to listen to the whole album. Uh, the first time I listened to it, I actually shut off halfway because it wasn't keeping my attention. I put it on again, kind of bored me. Again, I tried, I just really couldn't get into it. Uh, maybe a few more listens, it could be higher than this, but for right now, it's staying where it's at. All right, coming next, I'm With You. This is the first album featuring Josh Klinghoffer on guitar after Frusciante's uh, second exit from the band. This one's a decent album. I could tell, well, I can't tell, but to me, it feels like some of these songs were left over from sessions with Frusciante, but I could be mistaken. I didn't do research on that, and I don't know if that's a fact or not, but to me, some of it sounds like that. Uh, some cool stuff on here. Monarchy of Roses, which opens it. It's definitely a different opener for the Chili Peppers. Uh, but a lot of catchy stuff on here. A little more mellow, but Factory of Faith, Brendan's Death Song, Ethiopia, Annie Wants a Baby, Look Around. Uh, the lead single from this, the, excuse me, the Adventures of Rain Dance Maggie. Awesome song. It's got that signature Chili Peppers recipe. Uh, when it first came out, even though it had Josh on guitar, and it was a little different, I was like, all right, this is pretty cool. I like this. Uh, another standout track for me on here is Police Station. They got some cool stuff there. Uh, there's 15 albums, by the way. So, 12 albums, I'm sorry. Can't even count. All right, so, coming at number nine for me. This is the debut album, simply titled The Red Hot Chili Peppers, released in 1984. Uh, this lineup is, features Anthony Kiedis on vocals, Flea on bass. They're the only two remaining members on all the uh, albums, the two founding members. It features Cliff Martinez on drums, who replaced Jack Irons when he went into the session. And the original guitarist, Halel Slovak, was actually playing with a different band at the time who he tried to go a different direction. He had a record deal and he thought it would be better. So um, the guitarist on here is called a Jack Sherman. And I know from reading his book, Scar Tissue, Anthony Kiedis was not a big fan of Jack Sherman. They just didn't get along. And, I mean, I guess he was just on this album, did his job, and that was it. Now, I know this album isn't very loved by many, 
even the band members don't really like this album as much. But to me, I, I do like it. I, I think it's very unique. It's different sounding. Uh, the first single off of this was called True Men Don't Kill Coyotes. Of course, he actually says True Men Don't Kill Coyotes. There was a video for it. Don't know how much MTV play it got, but there is a video for that. Uh, just some cool stuff on here. I mean, all these songs to me are memorable. I do like this stuff. Baby Appeal, Buckle Down, Get Up and Jump, Why Don't You Love Me, Green Heaven, Mommy, Where's Daddy, Out in L.A. They would later name a uh, EP, Out in L.A. I believe that was released in, like, 93. Police Helicopter, You Always Sing the Same, Grandpappy Do Plenty. Of course, this is the remastered version, and there are five bonus tracks on here. So, yeah, I mean, this is definitely not the same Chili Peppers you would get on Californication in that style. Definitely a different style, but this is a style that they created, and I feel like no one's really duplicated that. I do like this stuff. It's very unique. Coming next, this is their sophomore album, Freaky Styly. Uh, Jack Sherman, as I said, would really would leave the band after the uh, first album. I believe he was fired, but don't quote me on that. Uh, original guitarist Hillel Slovak is back in the band. Cliff Martinez is still on this album on drums. Uh, this is cool stuff. This is actually produced by George Clinton from Parliament Funkadelic. Jungle Man is a great opener. Hollywood Africa, American Ghost Dance is a cool dancey funky track. Again, this is like a, this is like the debut album, but it expanded upon the sound. Much better songs on here. They do a cover of Sly and the Family Stones. If you want me to stay, uh, some other standout tracks on here. Uh, Catholic Schoolgirls Rules, pretty cool. Yertle the Turtle, and the title track, Freaky Styly. Uh, coming in next. The Uplift Mofo Party Plan. This is the third release from the Chili Peppers. I know I'm kind of going in order here. Uh, so this would feature the original, original lineup. Anthony Kiedis on vocals, Hillel Slovak on guitar, Flea on bass, and Jack Irons on drums. Jack Irons was the original drummer. He left the band before the uh, debut album and would come back for this one. Cover art is very dated, as you can see here. It's very uh, urban-y 80s you know mid late 80s <laughs> not not that good but this album is really really good fight like a brave which opens it up would come probably chili peppers first uh minor hit did get a lot of mtv play um funky crime next me and my friends another awesome track with that amazing bait flea bass solo to open up the track backwoods skinny sweaty man behind the sun is the first uh kind of ballady song i feel like that could have been a hit but it's very 80s sounding Cover of Bob Dylan's Subterranean Homesick Blues. Um, special Secret Song Inside was the edited name for this song. I'm not going to say it, but this is the remastered version. And that title was replaced by the original one. No Chump Love Sucker, Walked On Down the Road, Love Trilogy, and Ends With Organic, Beatbox Band. Um, this was... Yeah, the productions on this is pretty cool. There are a couple bonus tracks on here, being that it is the... Remastered version, they're just some dem instrumental demos. Uh, really cool stuff. This is when the Chili Peppers really feel like they were going to make it. Um, they were on their way. Third album. All right, they're building up. They got a little bit of MTV play. Unfortunately, something tragic would happen. And I know I'm kind of going in order, but it's not on purpose. It's really the way I ranked them. So coming in is their fourth album, Mother's Milk. Uh, unfortunately, after the Uplift MoFo party plan, Hillel Slovak would die of a heroin overdose, and uh, Jack Irons was just so distraught from the, you know, death of Hillel, his, his you know, really good friend, that he wound up leaving the band. And Flea and Anthony were back to square one. Again, Anthony Kiedis was a, you know, big, uh, I don't want to say big, but he was uh, really into drugs at the time, especially heroin. So he was battling his own demons. And they went and got a drummer by the name of Chad Smith and a little-known guitarist, a young guy named John Frusciante, who was actually a big fan of the band. As you know now, that is the iconic classic lineup, even though it's not the original one. This album is really good. This is the one that definitely made them MTV uh, sweethearts. Opens up a good time, boys. The cover of Stevie Wonder's Higher Ground would be their first huge hit, then finally gain radio play. Uh, again, it's all over MTV. Subway to Venus, Magic Johnson, that's their ode to the, obviously, the great baseball, basketball player, excuse me, baseball. Chili Peppers are big fans of the Lakers and basketball. 
Nobody Weird Like Me, Knock Me Down, another cool song that had some MTV play, minor hit for him, Taste of Pain, Stone Cold Bush is an amazing hard song, very fast, cover of Jimi Hendrix is Fire, Pretty Little Diddy, which is a cool instrumental, which actually the band Crazy Town sampled a part of that on their single Butterfly, if you remember that, you know, new metal band Crazy Town, and Butterfly was huge for him, I want to say probably like 2001. Uh, punk rock classic, sexy Mexican maid, Johnny kick a hole in the sky. Again, this is the remastered version with a lot of bonus tracks on here. This one's definitely worth grabbing the remastered version as you do have two covers of Jimi Hendrix songs. The band, especially Flea, was a big fan of Jimi Hendrix. So the other two covers on this are Castles Made of Sand from Axis Bold as Love. It's one of my favorite Hendrix songs of all time. And also Crosstown Traffic. Both of those are featured live. All right, now we're getting into the top five. Coming number five, One Hot Minute, another album that doesn't get a lot of love. This one features Dave Navarro on guitar as John Frusciante would lead the band for the first time. Basically, he wanted to retire and he wanted to go straight into heroin addiction. And that, that was his goal at the time. He just wanted to be left alone. Um, really cool tracks on this. Not as strong as the album that came before this. The band was, was huge at the time. This was released in 95. Uh, big songs off this were Aeroplane. That was a big hit for him. Also, uh, My Friends. It's a really cool ballad. Um, very depressing, but really good song. Other tracks on here that opens up. Warped, Deep Kick, Coffee Shop is an awesome one. We could dance like Iggy Pop. P, the track sung by Flea. One Big Mob, Walkabout, Tearjerker. Is actually a tribute to Kurt Cobain. For those of you who did not know that, uh, go back and listen to it. It's all about Kurt Cobain. Anthony Kiedis was a big fan of Nirvana and you know friends with Kurt. They did go on tour when Nirvana was really blew up with Nevermind. The title track "One Hot Minute" is a classic. Falling in the gray, shallow be my name, and it ends with transcending. Again, produced by Rick Rubin. Like I said, not as strong as the album that come before this, but overall a really decent album. You know, Dave Navarro on guitar. He's awesome, awesome guitars from Jane's Addiction. Jane's Addiction actually broke up before that album. So he was free to go. Coming number four, by the way. This was released in 2002. 2002. Some reason I thought it was 2003 for a second. Uh, really strong album. The title track was huge. A lot of MTV, radio play, some other hits on here. Uh, Can't Stop is a huge song. The Zephyr song, another huge song for the band. But overall, this is a solid five-star album. I love every track on here. Uh, I'm just going to go down on. By the way, universally speaking, kind of a minor hit for the band. This is The Place, Dosed, awesome song. Uh, I can't read that one. I forget that one. Don't Forget Me, awesome intro riff to that song. I love that. The Zephyr song, Can't Stop, I Could Die For You, Midnight, Throw Away Your Television, Love that song, also awesome intro to that. Cabron, kind of a Spanish guitar on there, Spanish flavor to that. Uh, Tear on Mercury, Modern Thing, awesome song. Worm Tape, and probably my favorite track on this album, Venice Queen, dedicated to one of Anthony Kiedis' uh, friends. It was an, uh, an older woman that passed away, and basically she became like a shaman to him once he got clean and sober. Awesome, awesome album. Like I said, five stars. It's one of those albums that you put on, you can't turn it off. And for me, the ending, Venice Queen, is just so strong. All right, coming number three, 1999's Californication. Now, I know a lot of people probably rank this higher. A lot of people probably put this in number one. But for me, I bought this the day it came out. And I just have listened to it way too much. The singles on here, to me, are just a little overplayed. So that's why I bring it in at number three. Uh, with that being said, it's still a five-star classic album. Still one of the best albums of all time. It's great. Uh, like I said, the singles from here, Scar Tissue was the lead-off single. I remember seeing that video constantly again, and that was what prompted me to buy this album right away. Not only that, John Frusciante got clean, and he was back in the band for the first time uh, since, uh, I believe, 90, late 92, early 93 is when he left the band. So about six little over six years went by without him so he was back in the band and you could definitely tell not only was john frusciante sober uh anthony kiedis was also their songwriting reflects it their energy reflects it uh, besides scar tissue 
Other Side was the next single. Uh, Californication, another single from this. Those three songs were huge. They were all over MTV Play, especially Californication with that awesome video, which to me reminded me of Sega Dreamcast game at the time. For those of you that old enough to remember that, that makes me old. But anyway, yeah, like I said, I remember buying this in the summer of 99. Just an amazing album produced by Rick Rubin. Again, uh, Around the World, which opens it, was another single for the band. Parallel Universe, one of my favorite Chili Pepper songs of all time. I always wonder why they didn't release that as a single, but not here in the U.S. they didn't. It should have been a single. Get on top. It's got that cool Anthony Kiedis rap to it. Easily slower song. Porcelain, a very, very slow song. Kind of a ballad there. Uh, Emmett Remus, I Like Dirt. Cool, funky song. This Velvet Glove, an amazing guitar intro on that. Really cool riff. Savior, Purple Stain, Right on Time. Again, it's got that one-two punch that the Chili Peppers are so... Uh, iconically known for and then road tripping which ends it is a really cool acoustic ballad with basically just hanging out with his friends and you know road tripping with my two favorite allies real cool video for that also all right coming at number two 2006's stadium arcadium this is a double album divided into jupiter and mars uh, again an album i bought the day it came out uh, this one was really strong for me. I absolutely love this album. Danny California was the lead off single. And back when this came out, uh, you weren't able to... Well, I, ne I never was really a computer guy. I know friends that had uh, Kazaa and Napster and things like that. Uh, what's the other one? LimeWire or something like that. Uh, for me, I actually downloaded the ringtone of Danny California. That's how much I loved that song and I wanted to hear it. And uh, I remember that came out when i was in colorado i was actually in colorado visiting and that was basically the soundtrack i would listen to that chorus on my phone over and over again kind of funny but yeah anyway 28 tracks on here to me a completely listenable 28 amazing tracks like i said danny california was the lead off single snow hey yo when i heard that song i was like wow this song is amazing uh that was to become a single another single off here which is pretty popular tell me baby so basically with this album, when it came out, the first CD was so strong that it took me forever to pop the second CD in. But I remember being at work, popping that second CD in and just going, wow, that's almost as, if not just as strong as the first disc. Uh, just amazing. I mean, some other standout tracks in here to me, uh, the title track, uh, She's Only 18, Don't Like the Rolling Stones, Torture Me is amazing, especially Michigan. Wow, I mean, when that song came out, just I would just I would literally blow out speakers. That I absolutely loved that song. Wet Sand, another amazing track on a disc too. Uh, Hard to Concentrate is amazing. Twenty First Century, she looks to me. Uh, Make you feel better. Animal Bar, Storm in a Peacup, Teacup, excuse me. Um, and of course, the track that ends the second disc, Death of a Martian. Such a strong album. Uh, again, produced by Rick Rubin. And like I said, these two can change from day to day. But for me, this one's a little stronger just because Californication. I think I played it out too much. And this has more tracks on it. And coming at number one for me, no surprise. I actually have a tattoo on my back dedicated to this album. One of my favorite albums of all time. Blood Sugar, Sex Magic. This is the uh, album that made the Chili Peppers a household name. Basically launched them into the stratosphere has the amazing ballad one of the most well-known songs of all time under the bridge some other hit singles on here breaking the girl and give it away everyone knows them songs at this time the chili peppers were basically one of the biggest bands in the world right up there with nirvana nirvana and pearl jam would actually open up for the band on this tour they would you know headline Lollapalooza. they would go on to play woodstock 94 amazing amazing album um, 17 tracks on here none of them are boring all amazing i would say laid some standout tracks on here for me but i would just name every single track on here i just love the uh the funky rapping songs on here i don't even know how to explain it that anthony he is rap he has uh i could have lied which is actually a song about Sinead o'connor who anthony he just dated for a brief time and was absolutely in love with her but it's just a such a cool guitar riff i absolutely love it uh the righteous and the wicked war and peace i mean such cool stuff the title track blood sugar sex magic another iconic riff naked in the rain patchy rose peacock 
Uh, my lovely man, Sir, so cool this stuff. Sir Psycho Sexy, and it ends with a cover of Robert Johnson's They're Red Hot. All-star album, amazing. For some reason, you've never heard this album. I'm sure everyone probably has. If you haven't, go back and listen to it. All 17 tracks to me are just amazing. All right, we're going to recap real quick. Come at number one, Blood Sugar Sex Magic. Number two, Stadium Arcadium. Number three, Californication. Number four, By The Way. Number five, One Hot Minute. Number six, Mother's Milk. Number seven, The Uplift Mofo Party Plan. Number eight, Freakly, Freaky Styly. Number nine, the uh, debut album, Red Chili Peppers. Number 10, I'm With You. Number 11, Unlimited Love. And coming in last for me, number 12, The Getaway. All right, everybody, thanks again for watching. Again, drop in the comments your ranking. Tell me how you feel about my ranking. I know there's some hate out there from Red Chili Peppers, and there's some amazing love. Uh, do me a favor, say the hate for yourself. I appreciate if you did watch the video, but if you're a big hater of Chili Peppers, then maybe you shouldn't have clicked on this video. But if you did, again, I, I do thank you for watching. Uh, everyone, be safe. See you next time.